Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending upon where you are in the world, and welcome to part one of our webinar series, an in-depth look at what SAP S for HANA can do for your business. Today's webinar is entitled Considering SAP S for HANA, a thorough look at what SAP's next generation ERP suite can mean for your business, hosted by SAP Insider and sponsored by Illumity. My name is Steve Paul. I'm your moderator today. We have just a few announcements before we begin. This webinar is designed to be interactive between you and our presenter, and later in the program we'll ask for your feedback. This webinar contains audience polling, so please complete the polls when they appear. You can participate in our Q&A session by asking questions about the information presented in this webinar at any time. Just type your question into the text box located at the bottom left of our console, and then click the Submit Question button. We'll answer as many questions as time permits after our presentation. Slides will advance automatically throughout the event, and you can download a PDF copy of our presentation by clicking on the Download Slide link in the resource box on the bottom left of our console. And at this time, we recommend you disable your pop-up blockers. And if you're experiencing any technical problems, please visit our webinar help guide by clicking on the Help icon on the bottom right of our console. If slides are not advancing, please press the F5 key on your keyboard to refresh your browser. And now on to our presentation, Considering SAP S for HANA, a thorough look at what SAP's next generation ERP suite can mean for your business. Discussing today's topic will be Lorraine Howell, Vice President, Research and Development with Illumity. Over to you, Elaine. Lorraine? Uh, thank you very much, Steve. And uh, thank you for uh, welcoming all the guests uh, from all over the world and uh, all over the all different time zones. So yeah, so um, I would start off by saying we have we we have put together a series, a webinar series, to actually look at um, the process that we believe is a good process. And it, obviously, it's debatable and probably changeable depending on the on the company. But what we believe is a good process for companies to go through as they consider their transition and, and ultimate migration to S4HANA. And uh, we've split it up into four different webinar sessions. Um, and it kind of, the, the, each session kind of covers what we would like to um, engage uh, with you in terms of how you, how you make that transition. So the first webinar is, is getting to know SAP S4HANA. So I'm going to talk a bit about that today, and, 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 and I won't go into a lot of detail about what S4HANA is. I've done that in a previous webinar, and, and we will be doing a lot more of those very, very in-depth discussions. This is to frame the situation that you would need to consider as you move forward. So that will be the webinar today, and then we have a, a second webinar where we will actually deep dive into how you would discover differences between your current SAP environment and SAP S4HANA. And in some cases, maybe some of you are already on S4HANA, um, Simple Finance, or another version of S4HANA. Um, we would include that in, in, in that discussion. So really, what are the differences and how is this going to impact your business? The third webinar we'll, we'll cover is, is developing your business case. So if you're in a situation where um, IT really wants to move you forward into S4HANA, but the business is pushing against it a little and wants to, to see a real business case for at least moving forward sooner than later. Um, this, this webinar, I think, would be very useful to see how you actually go about uh, building that business case. And then the final webinar, um, and these are all kind of uh, uh, placed a month apart so that we can get to them pretty quickly with you, is, is actually creating that implementation roadmap uh, for SAP S4HANA. So what kinds of things do we need to get to sooner than later, and how can we plan that all out in a longer-term plan? So that's kind of the, the webinar series that, that we are introducing and starting today. Um, as I said, today's um, particular uh, session is going to be about you know, the S4HANA details, so considering S4HANA and, and doing a thorough look at what that is going to mean to your business. So the topics I want to go through um, you can see on this slide is basically to look at S4HANA and how it's involved, it evolved over time. Uh, look at what technical and structural improvements have come with the solution, and specifically uh, recently, and, and how that would impact, uh, impact your business. Um, look at the new user experience and, and see how it, it, it looks and functions, because I think that, of course, is a critical part of, of the upgrade. And then what are the key benefits just overall from, a, from a, a, you know, changing your business model, changing the way you work, and so on. 
And then we'll look at, um, at the end, we'll look at the different deployment options. And again, we'll get into far more detail on that in the, in, in the last webinar where we actually talk about the roadmap. But I want you to get a, a, a feel for that now and what will be covered in those webinars. And then how do you actually gain your, your, your support, your executive support? How, what is this whole process that you should go through to get you to a point where you can say, okay, now I have everything I need um, to move forward? So before I actually um, get into the content uh, in this regard, I'm going to hand over to Steve. Um, he wants to, to run a couple of polls just so that we can see where you're at in terms of your own business, and that can kind of help me modify a little bit uh, the way I, I do the rest of the presentation. So handing over to you, Steve. Great. Thanks very much, Lorraine. Uh, yes, we have a couple of poll questions that we'd like to just uh, ask our audience really quickly here. Uh, first one, uh, when do you think your company will make the move to SAP S for HANA? Would it be less than one year, one to two years, three to four years, or over four years? So please um, share your experiences um, with uh, your colleagues, and we'll show the results in a, in a few moments also want to remind our audience that we will be holding questions until the end of the presentation for our live Q&A. So uh, at any point, submit them, and uh, we will uh, answer as many as we can. So uh, getting some good response. Thank you very much. Uh, Lorraine, would you like to see the results of our first poll? I'd love to. Thank you. Okay. So interestingly, well, over half are saying uh, between one to two years. Any thoughts? Wow, yeah, that is interesting. And kind of what I've expected, um, we've been following um, some of the Gartner research on, on this topic. And, um, you know, Gartner has been saying that uh, they, just from the evaluations that they've done, that this seems to be where a lot of our, our, our SAP customers are today, um, seeing the benefits, starting to see the need to move forward. I mean, also 2025 is around the corner and getting closer all the time. So I'm not so surprised to see that. Okay. you want to go ahead with the next one? Right. Let's ask our second poll question. And we really want to know, uh, what do you see as the greatest obstacle of impl to implementing SAP S for HANA? Is it costs, fear of being at the bleeding edge, a lack of business case, uh, executive buy-in, or a need to sweat our current system? So there's a number of options for you. Pick the greatest uh, obstacle. And uh, thank you very much. I know a couple of people have responded to the uh, polls via the, the Q&A. Uh, if you could just um, uh, make your selection here, we'll be able to tabulate it and, uh, and share the results. Any guess, Lorraine, what, uh, what might be the uh, greatest obstacle? <laughs> do I don't know. I think I, I better reserve my comments. It may be costs. Uh, I'm not sure. Let's see. Okay, great. Well, let's take a look here. And again, thanks everybody for responding. Um, well, uh -huh. uh, right on, pretty much, almost 40% for costs. Yeah. So, yeah, and that, that, is, um, that is really interesting because I think a lot of people don't know what the costs are going to be to move to, to S4HANA, and I think that that is, is the biggest, it's like, it's like a black hole. You know, what are, we, what are we going to be expecting? So I wasn't too surprised. And, and the other one I, I, I kind of expected to see was the lack of business case. So, you know, I know IT looks at it and says, look, this is cool stuff. We need to move forward. Um, it's the greatest and newest technologies. And if you're a technology geek like I am who loves all the new stuff, you want to move forward. Um, but getting that uh, business buy-in is, is, is sometimes a problem because you go to the business and say, wouldn't it be cool to have this nice user experience? It's like, well, we, we are we working in SAP, okay? Like, well, how is that going to make us do better business? So I'm not too, too surprised at those two. But yeah, so, so thanks, Steve. Sure. Over to you. All right. So moving on then, I, I think that we, we, uh, w the, when it comes to costs and, 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 and um, business case, I think we'll talk a lot about business case um, in, in all of the webinars and specifically in the third webinar, we're going to focus on that and, and see how you actually go about building that business case. Um, the costs, I think, is something that I want to address um, in, in the fourth webinar and, and to kind of give you a ballpark on, on what, what, what we've experienced and what we kind of think those costs would be. 
um, and, 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 and then maybe we can have a discussion um, after that webinar on, on you know, what, that, what that really means. It's very difficult to, to give you an exact number, of course, because everybody's got a different amount of systems and function, functionality that will be affected uh, by doing this migration. And I'll, I'll try and also clarify as we go along the, the concept of migration versus conversion versus upgrade, and I have a few slides on that at the end. So when I talk about migration to S4, I'm talking about just moving from your current environment to S4, and there may be different paths to do that, and we'll talk about that later on. But let's uh, quickly go through some slides that kind of look at the evolution of, of S4HANA. So this first slide, particularly, you probably, probably a lot of you have seen this already, and it, it's important to, to me and I think to, to, to a lot of the SAP customers out there to see that SAP has actually evolved with technology over time. Like in 1972 when you were running R1 or R2, um, you know, still had the black screens and, and a, a completely different user experience, but quite a lot of business functionality already back then. And then as, you know, the system involved, SAP added new business functions every, every decade or so. But at the same time, you know, user experience started becoming more important. Um, in the beginning, I think it was just like, you know, use the business functions and good luck with the user experience. Um, I think that, that, that changed over time. And uh, it, particularly in, S in 2004 when SAP came out with Enjoy SAP, the whole idea was to make it more enjoyable. I don't think they particularly achieved it back then, but that was the, the intention. And all along this time, S um, Hasse Plattner uh, from, from SAP was working on his – he had his own little university and he was working on bringing – uh, data into memory, having a database where you could store all of your data in memory with the primary objective to be able to pull that data out as, as fast as possible so that you don't have to rely on data warehouses for, for just basic operational reporting. And in 2011, they finally announced we've got this in-memory system, which is great, and uh, didn't know quite what to do with it at that time. They put it under, under data warehouse, under BW, and got BW to... It, uh, to run faster and eliminated all the aggregates and stuff. But it was in 2013 that the most exciting time, I think, in, in, in the SAP world happened when they actually put this on top, the suite, the business suite, the ERP solution that you have today on top of HANA. And it, it didn't give you a hell of a lot of stuff at that time. It did give you a lot of better reporting, real-time reporting uh, through HANA Live, which was great. Um, but then, you know, SAP realized, you know, with this introduction of an in-memory platform, we could, we could actually make the system structurally much, much simpler. And, and in doing that, you're actually changing the structures of the core environment, um, and they had to rename the, pro the product. And so it came out with a new name in 2015. Um, it, firstly, a simple fi S4 HANA Simple Finance, and then S4 HANA Logistics, uh, which was the 1511 release which is now called enterprise management. So a massive e evolution over time, SAP keeping up with technology, and at the same time they introduced the, the user experience using HTML5, which was, which was really great. So moving on from there, SAP said, okay, this is great for the, for the, for the ERP core, but you know, we've, we've got a lot of, 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 of digitalization that's happening in the world today, and that's a l lovely term that everybody likes to use. But it really meant that we were starting to connect with each other um, in, a, in a digital way. So, so uh, vendors and customers and, and your, your, um, your workforce could all start connecting with each other. You could do recruitment online instead of sitting in your system and then having to have another system to do that. So SAP purchased a, a whole bunch of uh, cloud solutions uh, to complement this ERP backend. And, uh, you know, I've kind of categorized them into SRM, CRM, and HCM. Um, and I kind of also, uh, uh, sorry, on the next slide, kind of highlighted what the differences are. So SRM, the, the primary uh, product there was Ariba. SAP has Field Glass and Concur, and we could go into hours talking about what all these do and help the business with. But uh, Ariba was the one I kind of zoned in on and said, it, it was a, it's a great tool for strategic sourcing, um, catalog management and stuff like that. So you can actually work with vendors that other customers have worked with and, and, and kind of develop a, a database of good vendors out, out there and, and, and access their catalogs and so on. 
So that was a great add-on, and it, it's connected to this ERP backend. But all the purchase order, the full purchase order management process, the, all the functionality around the logistics side of that is still in the core. And in fact, SAP even brought additional stuff in the core, into the core that may have sat on the outside before to kind of complement that. Same with um, CRM, for example. Um, you know, SAP Hybris was introduced uh, and purchased, uh, acquired by SAP to, for its e-commerce platform, for its, its, its CRM cloud for, for customer platform. And that gives you the ability to have a customer portal and a really nice e-commerce environment. But all of the actual full order execution, um, the, the, the post-sale services, and any of the other transactions are still housed within the ERP core. So that integration now exists, so you have this full functionality. Um, same with uh, planning. So to, to get full planning across multiple systems, SAP left their integrated business planning solution in the cloud. Um, but at the same time, still, you know, your core production planning, your uh, detailed scheduling, your advanced uh, available to promise is still in the core itself. And in fact, the available to promise and the, uh, and the detailed scheduling was actually brought into the core from APO um, to, to enrich the core, but then also give you that ability to get the visibility that um, IBP or integrated business planning would have. So it's a great addition uh, from a digital perspective to the, to the core. And then, um, of course, we know success factors and, and the fact that you do recruitment and, and performance appraisals and all those things online with your employees, with the workforce out there, and then you have that integrated to the back end, which still at this stage supports payroll and benefits and all those other things. Now, ultimately, I think SAP's long-term goal is to actually take payroll into the cloud as well through Employee Central. But right now, in the current uh, version of s up till 2025, I believe, um, that payroll processing will be sustained and, 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 main, and, and uh, supported within the core. So that's kind of, this is what SAP, the world that SAP has been building for, for, for our customers so that we can satisfy all their needs. And what I did is I kind of took this and said, let's split this up into different areas. So if we pick up all these little cloud solutions and pack them into a box, and then we take the HANA cloud platform, which I haven't yet referred to, and I will, to, will in a second. This is an SAP product that's supposed to be uh, or is, is there to assist us in enhancing the functionality in our core and in our cloud solutions. So if we take that um, and we... Um, we actually um, sorry, um, move that out of the way, we then end up with the, just the core. And then if we take the core and we take the core to the side, and remembering that the core can be on-premise or on, uh, hosted in some way in the cloud or even in a public cloud for that matter, and we'll talk about that in a few minutes as well. But this is kind of the world that SAP, this is how they look at the, their solutions that they've put out there for you. And... Um, SAP loves to talk about this nowadays, the bimodal IT. And uh, what they really mean here is that your core system with these cloud products, the digital core that we just looked at it on the previous page, is really mode one. That's your core operations. This is how you run your business. Um, and we want to make that as powerful as possible. But then there's the second mode on the HANA cloud platform or the SAP cloud platform now, where you can actually go and uh, build all the applications to your heart's desire to actually complement um, this, this, this mode one or this core of your, of your SAP environment. So a slide I kind of borrowed from SAP with permission um, is the, this slide that kind of shows the, the, the details of that HANA cloud platform. And I, and I, will, I promise to, to do a webinar just on the HANA cloud or the SAP cloud platform, as, as it's now known, uh, one of these days to talk about how you as a company can actually start leveraging this. But in the new world, in the S4HANA world, this platform is a, is a huge complement to what you, you, you would, would have in the core systems. SAP constantly adds application services, which you can see at the bottom here, um, that you can start using there. So if you want to build an IoT solution that connects into your ERP, you would build it here. You don't have to go and find a third-party solution for that. If you want to do some machine learning from the data that you have, you do it here. If you want to enhance your analytics, you want to build uh, mobile services in the cloud, 
and so on and so forth. I, I could go on for bloody hours on this, so I'm not going to do that right now, but we can, we can talk again, and I, I, I promise that I'll try and get a webinar together on that. All right, so that, I think in this, this, this in integration layer that I've put around here just shows you that built into this platform is, is the um, Cloud Platform Integration Services, and that really enables all of these platform apps, all the apps in the, in the cloud solutions, uh, to connect to your ERP core. All right, so and, and here are some examples that uh, I'll leave you with when you, when you download the PDF. You can look in, in more detail. But these are examples of what you can actually build in this, on a, in, in this SAP Cloud platform. So extensions to the, to the cloud solutions, extensions to your on-prem solution, and just new apps that you feel like building that are going to make your business run better. All right, so moving on, if you had to, if we, let's go back into that core that's at, excuse me, in the left-hand corner, and, and let's just look at some things that you need to know as you start your journey. So the first thing is um, the, the NetWeaver stack that, that S4HANA sits on is on 7.4, 7.5. I think 7.51 is, is, the, is the latest version out there. But that's the stack, the, the upgrade that will happen once you move to, to S4HANA. And then within the core itself, the enterprise management suite, the actual business functions that you have, um, there's a lot of simplified functionality. So a lot of simplified structures where SAP has said that we are going to take away redundant data um, tables, and, and I'll show you that in a second as well. Um, maybe even we'll consolidate functionality. So where we were using credit management through the SD module, the sales and distribution module before, we're actually going to use the um, uh, uh, financial supply chain management module, and we're going to consolidate that credit management functionality into one function in SAP. And that's going to simplify everything for everybody. It's going to be one place to do all of this business. So that's what they've kind of done in that process. And then th there is a lot of classical um, non SAP S4 HANA functionality that exists in your system today that may not be part of the target architecture for S4 HANA in the future. And that kind of functionality um, is important for you to be aware of. And when we do our transition assessment with you and when we go through the next webinar on this, we're going to talk a little bit about what those things are. Because if you are running any of those things, um, and an example, a simple example of that would be the equipment and tools management um, module. Um, for ECNO, uh, right now that's a compatibility pack. It's, it's not the target ar architecture. SAP is replacing it um, with simplified functionality that you will be able to use and it will be compatible by 2025. But up until then, it's, it's functionality you can still use. So it's good for you to be aware of that and, and to know, you know where I'm going to uh, focus my attention when I, when I upgrade my system. So that is one of the things I wanted to point out. It's a smaller layer, of course, but it, it, it is in there as well. And then on top of that, there is non-supported functionality. And SAP has this uh, list out there called the Simplification List, and they're going to publish a new one in September with the new version of S4HANA that will tell you exactly where there are certain areas where they've consolidated uh, different functionality, like credit management. Um, so they've removed the old um, sales and distribution credit management or where they, they, they've just um, taken functionality that they might have built for one customer uh, historically that kind of got uh, grandfathered into the system that may not be necessary anymore because 99.9999% of customers don't use it. Now, if you're one of those guys, we need to find that out, and we've got to find out what are the alternatives for you. But, but that simplification list, it's about 400 pages long, of which probably maybe 40 would be relevant to your business, but I think it is something that you should look at. And then what SAP said is they brought some stuff into the core, like um, the BPC, which always was a standalone solution, either on a, on a BW environment or on a Microsoft environment. They've actually consolidated that into S4HANA. And we've been playing around with that quite a lot on the planning and consolidation side and have been pleasantly surprised uh, by, the, by the capability of, of that functionality. And then, of course, you've got all of your BI reporting now where you had a data warehouse before. Not, and I'm, I'm not saying data warehouses go away, but some of the operational reporting that you were just doing in a data warehouse because it was too slow in your operational system is now embedded inside of the, um, the S4HANA environment. 
So that really gives you the changes, things that I want you to consider and that we will talk about in more detail in the, in the second webinar. And then, of course, outside of all of that is, is, is all of the cloud solutions that, that are integrated into this environment. The next slide really just shows you, and I, this, you'll, probably, you'll probably see better when you, when you load the PDF, but it really looks at this enterprise management module, and it talks about uh, the digital core, which is this dark blue area. This comes delivered with S4HANA um, with no extra licensing. So this is really a licensing discussion uh, um, uh, slide because it's saying that everything that's in here, the core functionality, is part of S4, but as soon as you step out into the dark, into the light blue section, um, there's functionality in there like pla uh, planning, business planning and consolidations, like advanced ATP or extended warehouse management uh, on the on the supply chain side, that are all um, part of the S4 HANA core. But there are some additional licenses uh, for that. Now, if you already have licenses, we can talk about that. You probably they grandfathered in. Um, to some extent, but we, this is just something I, we will be aware of as we go through the transition process with you. And then outside, um, we're really talking about in this gray area are all the, um, the, the, the cloud solutions. So we're talking about the Ariba and Conquer and the function, fun, functionality that you would find out there. So I think this is a useful slide from that perspective, and we could get into more details on that as well. So. From my perspective, I, I wanted to finish off my discussion about S4HANA and it's, it's, it's the wonders of S4HANA. Of course, you can hear I'm very enthusiastic. I mean, I've been through a lot of um, implementations uh, and uh, some greenfield and a couple of migrations as well. And I know there's, it's never as, as plain sailing as one would love it to be, but there were some exciting things. And, and to me, the best parts were, were these three aspects of, 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 of S4HANA. The new architecture, um, the, the role-based user experience, the new design, and then the, 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 the change of the way you run your business in terms of becoming smart, looking at exception-based management. Uh, just, the tools are there to make things better for you. And I think those, those are the three things I just wanted to zone, on, zone into very quickly. So if we look at the, um, the modern architecture, so this is the technical and structural improvements that have been made in the solution. Um, we can see here, for example, the, the simplified data structures that we talk about, and, and, and that this is very important for you to understand what that means. And, and again, in a, in a deeper dive discussion with you, we could probably show you that it's not something that you need to be that afraid of, because even though structures have changed, SAP still supports the old structures in terms of programs, ABAP programs, and things that you might have written. But we'll talk about that um, subsequently in, in other webinars or in a deeper dive with you. Um, you know, the instantaneous responsiveness that we get from having the, the HANA architecture, the in-memory in architecture, the fact that SAP can finally bring stuff that used to sit outside in, in, in solutions like APO, extended warehouse management, transportation management, stuff like that, back into the core so that it's all in one place and you don't have that integration uh, issue that you, you might have had in the past. And then just having you know, all your reporting coming from one place like that, this is the, the, the modern architecture that makes that possible. And then I always have to show you my favorite slide. If you hadn't seen this in the previous webinar, you'll see it now. It just it has a list of just some of the tables that currently exist. Not, this is definitely not comprehensive. Um, some of the tables that exist in ECC today in, all of the, um, in, in, in four of the, the, the main modules in, in finance, uh, materials management and and um, and sales. Well, actually, three modules primarily. And uh, so, what SAP has done is they looked at all these things. They said, like, we know that there's a lot of tables here that are redundant. These BSIS, BSAS, all these things are carrying data twice in the system. So, what they did is they said, well, let's look at all this and see which of these tables we can actually eliminate. And now you see disappearing off your screen a whole bunch of, of, of tables that are no longer relevant or needed um, in the system. They can be archived, sunsetted. And what SAP does is they build this compatibility view, which I've kind of mentioned in the middle, that's a view on the new table um, that, that, that references the old name so that you can still run your reports and so on. But you, you can imagine, you've got a system that's got all these simplified 
um, table structures in there and so much easier now to, to write code if you need to or so much easier now to run reports because you only have a, a limited set of tables that you have to worry about. So a huge, huge um, saving in the architecture. So that, I'm excited about this. I am a bit of a techie, so unfortunately that these kind of things do excite me. Uh, but if I go on to the uh, next slide, the other thing is the, the user experience. And again, you know, I, I was a teacher in a past life. I have a, a real soft spot for the, the experience of the people that have to deal with the knowledge that we give them, like with the systems that we give them. And if they aren't working in a happy environment where they can do their business, that, that, that concerns me a lot. And seeing this, these changes in SAP has, has really excited me. So a real people-centric um, uh, interface that works on any device so you can be you know, on your tablet, you can be on, you know, traveling, and you can work on your phone. Um, with, you know, that's com completely browser-based if you want it to be. Or it can integrate with a GUI as well, um, with embedded workflows, um, with decision support, so you can make decisions. And then um, I just mentioned here that what I'm, what, what I'm using now with my customers is the latest version of SAP Fiori, which is what this UX is, uh, 2.0, you'll see that it, it, it is, is a game changer. Now, I'm not spending a lot of time in this webinar doing a demo on Fury. I did a little bit of that in the previous webinar that I did, uh, not related to the series, but I, you know, we'll be happy to show you any of this. So if you have not gone to the trial on, on, on SAP's site itself and looked at this, but it's a, it's a great interface, and, and, and it, it enables you to do all of your work um, from one type of user experience with notifications, with, play, with, with a personalization capability, with the ability to see where you were last and be able to click back and go to where you were last, which is phenomenal, um, even though you've closed that uh, particular session down. So great. You know, SAP is proud of it. They always tell me about their Red Dot Award and make sure that I – I published that, but they did get an award for one of the a really good UX design um, for Fiori. And then the, the third and, and last part I wanted to talk about in terms of S4HANA and, and what it can do for your business is the smart business um, aspect of it, which is kind of integrated into the architectural changes that we talked about and integrated into the user experience that we talked about. But what we really, what I really mean here is having that ability to, to work on an exception based um, uh, 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 in an exception based environment, in other words, to see where things are going wrong in my business, if I can identify the KPIs or even the work lists that will tell me where I need to focus my attention aren 't I going to be so much more efficient at my job and if i 'm more efficient isn 't that going to drive revenues and, and, and margins? I hope so, and I believe so and, and I think this is what you 'll see. Um, in, these, in these applications. And these have only been made possible uh, because of the technology changes that, that we've undergone. Everything's real time. Um, everything's in a, in a really nice user experience. So there's embedded, all the embedded analytics, the ability to simulate, to predict. So prediction's becoming huge now. All I hear from SAP nowadays is machine learning. Um, I have to get deeper into that myself. But it's very exciting when you can see that when I do something, the system actually remembers what I did. SAP's got this cool new thing called the co-pilot that they're going to be inter introducing soon, which is really much a machine learning environment that kind of knows who you are as a user and kind of gives you suggestions as to how to make your, you do your day better. So that was really nice to see. Um, anyway, I'm getting a bit carried away, but these are the things that um, I think that you would see through smart business. And, and this was just a screenshot of uh, the, the, the procurement user's view, and, and we looked at this a little detail last time, but I'm just saying that these KPIs that you see here should drive the way I react. So anything in red is something obviously not, not good, and I want to drill down and solve that problem. Anything in, in amber may be something I, I, I can look at later on today once I've resolved the reds. And then the greens, maybe I don't even look at it. I just take note, everything's great, and, and, and I'm okay with that. I have my inbox, I can react to any, any, any urgent issues, and then I have a procurement overview page as a procurement user that will show me all my, my, all my um, suppliers' activities and you know, where I've, I've got unsourced POs and I want to source them, and like, it, it will make my business completely uh, uh, renewed. So this is really an, a, another way of doing business. Sometimes when I talk to, to uh, 
current ERP or ECC uh, users, they say, well, we do our business. We write, we, you know, we've got our, our strategy on how we work every day. This is really making you think a little bit out of the box. You know, okay, now I see what I can do. Maybe I should change the way I do things and maybe make myself a little bit more efficient. Uh, sometimes what we did in the past was just because of the limitations of, of, of the system in terms of being able to give me this kind of real-time decision support. So I'm hoping that you see this as, 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 as exciting as, as I obviously do. Um, so that's it now up to this point where I, I wanted to just give you that as, as a background. And, as, and like, like you'll see later on when I get to the end of this, um, we, can, we can set up more detailed times with you individually as, uh, you know, as people that are interested. Um, what, what else can you show us? Give us some live demos on some of these, these aspects and, and we could dig a lot deeper into, into what S4 has to offer. And really what I'm trying to do there is also help you start thinking about a, at least a high-level business case to move forward. So the different um, deployment options. So I, you know, on-prem you probably know today that your SAP ECC, all the different enhancement packs, up to eight, which is available. Um, then you could move your that, you could pick all of that up at any point actually, um, even if you're on enhancement pack zero and put it on a HANA a database, so move from Oracle or SQL or wherever you are onto a, a HANA database. So that gives you that HANA Live reporting capability that we talked about earlier. Um, or you've got these simple finance uh, solutions that are really just the finance area that's been simplified. So new structures, enhanced Fiori experiences, just specifically um, uh, focused on finance. And then you have the full enterprise management solutions of which there have been three major releases, so 15.11, 16.10, and then uh, currently coming out, greatly anticipated, uh, 17.09. And those numbers, by the way, just represent the year and the month in which SAP released those, those items. And then mixed into all of this, of course, just to make your lives a little bit more complex, is cloud. And I'll spend just a few minutes on this. Um, but SAP also has cloud solutions. So we've got on-prem. We've got on-prem sitting in a hosted cloud, which maybe a lot of you do today with, with people like SunGuard or Onyx or maybe other hosting providers, which is kind of a cloud uh, environment because they're managing your services. Um, and then you go into SAP's HANA Enterprise Cloud, which is this, virtually the same as you hosting anywhere else, except it's on SAP's platform. And then you can, you can have different license um, discussions with them. Again, that's another webinar. Um, and, then you have, um, and then you have the uh, private cloud uh, where it's a little bit more controlled and a little bit more services provided by SAP in a completely subscription-based environment. And then you finally can get to public cloud where um, SAP manages everything. They do your upgrades for you and you kind of go on SAP's timeline. And what I'm showing you here is a combination of what's available on-prem or hosted or private cloud, which is the dark blue, and then the public cloud releases, which is the, uh, the light blue. And uh, you can see that the, we got 16.10, 17.09 coming, and then in the cloud, SAP is actually innovating on a quarterly basis. So the cloud actually moves forward a little faster than on-prem in terms of innovation, not necessarily in terms of functionality, and we'll talk about that in a second, uh, but definitely in terms of innovation. And then it gets rolled down to the on-prem version at the end of the year when the on-prem version gets released. So lots of discussion about this, and I promise in webinar uh, uh, four, when we talk about um, the roadmap, we can actually get into more details around this as well. So a lot of the slides I'm showing you in the, in the next 10 minutes, um, so that we can get to some questions and answers, will be um, covered in more detail in, in, in subsequent web webinars. But I wanted, for those who can't make the other webinars, at least to get a flavor of what, what's coming and what's, what's offered and what, what our process is, right, for going through this. So the next slide um, just gives you some more details about those options that I told you about. So the on-prem, um, which, which is on-prem in your own data center or on-prem at a hosted provider like SunGuard or Onyx or whatever your provider is or the HANA Enterprise Cloud, which is now hosted with SAP, uh, versus the private option, which is a, a fully uh, subscription contract, but still hosted um, by SAP. 
and then your public option, which is also a, a completely subscription solution, but here it's, it's completely SaaS, multi-tenant environment uh, that SAP uh, provides the upgrades and uh, the, uh, which are happening on a more regular basis and so on. So a good slide for those of you who want to think across the board as to, you know, if we are going to go uh, migrate to Eswahana, maybe there are other options here that we need to consider. Um, and this slide talks about the public cloud. Not going to get into a lot of detail. There's, a cup, there's four flavors of the public cloud available. Uh, the last one was uh, fully delivered in, in May this year. Um, and uh, there's a lot of functionality in there. Um, but I, again, there's a lot of discussion we can have about public cloud. I will just mention that with public cloud, um, you, you're, you, you can't migrate or convert to public cloud. If you do an implementation to public cloud, you have to virtually do a greenfield type of implementation. And, and then you would have to figure out ways to bring your um, modifications into that environment. And again, it's not done directly in the environment. This is where SAP uses the SAP cloud platform we spoke about uh, earlier extensively. So something we can talk about and consider um, in our subsequent webinars. All right, so this is talking about some of the transition scenarios. So you can obviously decide, I, I want to do a greenfield implementation. You know, we've had SAP for 25 years. We've customized the, the heck out of it, and uh, we really feel this is an opportunity to do a nice clean install, and we'll, we will figure out ways to bring our, 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 the relevant IP across. And so, yeah, you could go cloud or on-prem, depending on, on, on your choice. Um, but this is definitely a, a new implementation or a re-implementation of the environment that you have. Another uh, option is to say, well, let's do a landscape transformation. In this case, you might have a bunch of ERP solutions. Maybe you're a global company and you have a, a different ERP environment in, in, in Europe than you have in, in, in Canada and in the States. And you, now it's the time to bring it all together into S4. Um, you could do one of two things. You could do a new implementation, either on-prem or in cloud. Or you could say, let's take one of these and upgrade it uh, to an on-prem so, uh, to an s hana solution, and maybe we implement uh, central finance in there. And we, use, we, we, we just integrate all of the other systems into it you know, as an integration of finance only, and just that one uh, um, division of our company goes live with the full version of s hana And then we bring the others in as a new implementations into that environment over time. Again, this is going to be fun for our, our subsequent uh, d discussions, but there are a couple of options there. Or the last option, which I think is uh, what I've seen a lot of people going for, is saying we, we want to do this like an upgrade. We want to migrate or convert our system to s hana So just take our system. It's a global system, or it's a, it's, we only have one system. We want it to go to s hana we, we kind of want to do an evaluation of that system to see what, you know, what's going to be affected by this, but we want to move to it. Um, sooner than, than later, and we want to keep all of our, you know, the, the, the enhancements and stuff that we built. And that will be what we call a conversion. So migration to HANA is any one of these things. And then under that migration topic is either doing a new implementation, a landscape uh, transformation, or a system conversion. That's the terminology I use. I don't know if everybody does, but that's kind of what, what, what my company and our team has kind of got used to over time. We have to have some kind of uh, standards here. And just looking at this in detail then, and uh, I've talked about this, you have the choice of going to on-prem um, or to private cloud, so that would use the on-prem versions, or you could go to public cloud for the new implementations. For the landscape transformation, you have the central finance now embedded in there as an option. Um, and then finally, uh, if you're doing a direct conversion or a system conversion, um, you can either go directly from where you are directly into the latest and greatest version of S4 HANA, or you could do a phase transition where you move to suite on HANA first, and then you upgrade to S4 HANA later, which is probably the least risk, but the least gain uh, over time in some redundant work that you would do. But nevertheless, still definitely an option, and even Gartner says, you know, that's probably your lowest risk option, but uh, they still advise, you know, make sure that you're ready to go to S4 HANA when you, when you get there. So this diagram just shows you, again, that you can start from any database and make this one-step or two-step transition, and just some of the prerequisites, like you need to be on Unicode and so on. 
And again, we'll discuss this in more detail in, in the fourth uh, roadmap uh, section. Um, and also in that same section, we will discuss um, if you're doing a system conversion, the, the third option there, um, some of the wonderful tools that actually SAP provides, like Maintenance Planner, like the Custom Code Checklist, um, like the Upgrade Manager, that will enable you to actually analyze your system and figure out where you need to go. So this is the, the, the details of this we can get into. Um, I'll show you now um, on, on the next slide. What we're going to talk about is, so you've listened to me, and I, I'm talking extremely fast and showing you as much information as I can in, in 15 minutes to an hour. Um, but ultimately, hopefully it triggers in your mind, I need a transition roadmap. I need to figure out how I get to the point where we decide how are we going to migrate. And then I also want to, of course, discuss the cost of the migration itself. But how do I get to a point where I'm ready as a company? And from that perspective, we created a four-step uh, process. So the first step in the process is what I call the first why, understanding you know, what is s um, What are the high-level benefits to me? And SAP has a couple of tools that I've highlighted here. Called, one's called the Value Advisor, another one called, uh, which has just come out, uh, a Transformation Navigator um, that you can actually go Google and find yourself. And um, you can actually go in there and, and, and you can answer some questions and get some high-level view of, of what the benefits would be to you. So I just did a screenshot here of the Value Advisor. Um, but this is something that, that we could look at together or you could look at on your own um, to see how do, I, how do I understand why I should even be considering s hana The second thing is what. What is affected by s hana if we move to s hana So this is the transition assessment that I spoke about. Um, this is, this, I, I advise you run a workshop with, with your SI or with us um, to actually go over um, the different aspects of this. Um, you know, what is going to change? And I have a slide here that we'll go into detail in the second webinar to talk about what are these differences. You know, what duplicate functionality has SAP got rid of? Um, what ECC functionality has gone away where there's no direct replacement for it? You know, what, uh, where has SAP replaced some of its functionality with cloud solutions like, like success factors? You know, what um, standalone uh, solutions that maybe you run are now included in the core, and what's the effect of that on me? And what are the new capabilities uh, that come with, 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 um, with S4HANA? So that's a, really a good discussion with you because we've got to understand your system, and we've got to show you what, what, what has changed in, in, in S4. And with that, we've actually also got this thing that SAP has provided called the Pathfinder Report. And in order to run a Pathfinder report that helps you do this analysis um, to determine that what's going to be affected and also building a business case for your, for your, for your, um, your executives, is, you, is, this, is this report that requires what SAP calls the Enhanced Early Watch Report. So it's not the Early Watch Report that hopefully you're running um, regularly in your systems today. It's enhanced to actually calculate KPIs. So I've got a few sh screenshots on this thing. But it's actually great because it, it, it records all the activity in your system over a couple of months. You've got to let this run for a few months to get some reasonable data out of it. And then it comes with this report. This is actually the report that comes out of the system that tells you, you know, how you can improve your system today, you know, through enhanced operations and user experience, and how you can actually improve it with, with S4. So I'm, I'm going to go through this quickly now because I've left myself little time. But we will talk about this in the third webinar in detail because this is how you're actually going to build that business case. Your SAP is going to help you recommend to you all the innovations that you can actually do uh, and, and, and show your executives how you're going to improve their environment. So that's what all of these, uh, these slides actually go through. Very nice and colorful just to give you a taste of what it would look like when you run that report in the system. And then you can um, actually run the next phase in the process is to actually say, well, let's build this business case. So let's take all these benefits that we've now had generated by the system or generated in reports that we have and analyze each one of them and color code them and develop a heat map that kind of tells me, you know, everything's green, I better get to s hana yesterday. Or everything's red, I'm not in a hurry, but I now have to get there by 2025, so let's build a slightly different plan. So we're going to help you do that in the third webinar. 
And then the fourth webinar is actually looking at what, are, what is the roadmap, what are the tools that, are, that SAP has made available for us to do a conversion or to make that decision on which deployment option we're going to go on. So this slide just shows you the different strategies. So if you're a strategic adopter, need to get to S4 sooner than later, or if you're a tactical adopter and you only need to get there, you know, when you need to get there. How do we approach that? How do we, how do we build your plan out? And then how we, um, how we build that roadmap? So this is just saying, you know, that those different deployment options that I talked about earlier, how do we choose these deployment options? What are the right ways to go going forward? And then these are all those cool tools I had in that one slide, um, the custom code checker tool, the, the data volume management tool, the SAP sizing tool, et cetera, et cetera, that I can use to, to facilitate that process. All right, so this is the three, four steps. Um, the, there is a, 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 a um, deliverable at the end of each of these steps um, that will actually give you documentation and, and a plan um, to move forward. So in some cases, I, you'll see in this slide that I've kind of indicated there will be costs involved if you ask Illumity to help you with this. Um, in some cases, no costs, and in some cases, negotiable costs, depending on where we are. Um, if we're going to migrate the, your system together, these costs will be credited against the migration. I mean, we, we, we're going to bring our experts in to kind of help you, help you lead you to your decision. So, um, you know, a conversation we should have with you um, you know, post this webinar or post all four webinars to start getting moving on, on, on the process. So I um, am three minutes longer, almost four minutes longer than I wanted to go. I really do want to look at the Q&A, but we also, at, at the same time, we will address any questions, um, you know, subsequently in emails as well. Um, but that's like the fastest I could possibly go through the content. I think it was important for you to see where I'm, with the path I'm taking you down, and we'll get into more details on all of this in the subsequent webinars. So these are the subsequent webinars. Each of those four steps are being addressed. I think we, we got through the understanding S4 HANA, at least at a high level. We'll talk about the others um, subsequently from here. So I think that's as far as I needed to go. I think that I should hand over to see if there's any Q&A that I can address in the few minutes I have left. Okay, great. Excellent job. Thank you very much, Lorraine. Uh, before we go to Q&A, a couple things. Uh, we want to send out a link to um, register for the uh, series of events that uh, you saw before you. So please um, click here and uh, sign up for any or all of them. Hope to see you again uh, in the near future. And I also want to push out to our audience a feedback form survey that you can fill out and give us your uh, feedback on, uh, on this event and how we can improve on future events. So there's a, there's a couple things for you here. And now let's uh, go to our audience Q&A. As a reminder, do participate in the Q&A. Just type your question into the Q&A text box located at the bottom left of the console and click the Submit Question button. Uh, our first question here already uh, from Antoinette wants to know, is simple finance available in the cloud, or is that just only available on-prem? That's a good question. It is available in the cloud, so it's available um, uh, clearly in the private cloud or in a hosted environment because that's just um, the same as the on-prem, but it's also available in the public cloud. So one of the four kind of uh, pillars in the public cloud that I showed was the finance solution. So that's a full-blown central finance solution. Okay, and we have time for uh, another one here. Um, when we migrate to s hana from ECC, do we have to enable a full Fiori user experience? Is Fiori the only way our users will be able to access the system? So excellent question, actually good question, because I've had that from, from a, a bunch of my, my clients. Um, the answer is you do not have to go 100% Fiori when you upgrade so, in, in fact, uh, when, 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 when I've gone live with, with a couple of our customers, we, we chose not to do that just from an OCM perspective, from a change management perspective. We just felt that, you know, we, wanted to, we, we definitely wanted to activate uh, enough Fury to feel that they've got some real value out of the upgrade, and I think that's a decision you have to make as you discuss change management. 
Um, but we didn't want to, to over, you know, bombard them with a completely new experience out of the box because I think that would, would overwhelm them. Now, the only caveat there I, I would add is that there is some functions like bank management that only in s only works through a Fiori interface. So there will be some things that you will have to um, engage your users in and, and get them used to, but you don't have to throw a 100% Fiori user interface at them um, from day one. Okay, very good. Oh, let's see. We do have one more question here uh, from Vishal. Uh, we already have BW on HANA. How will it work with S for HANA on source system? Is this case, uh, in this case, do we uh, even required to BW on HANA? Uh, so that's probably one of the best que best questions nowadays because I remember when SAP uh, first announced HANA um, and it was in memory and it was going to sit under um, the business suite. My first question was, well, why do we need BW? And um, you know, and I've worked with BW solutions in the past, so I kind of also realize it's a it's a very rich data warehouse. Um, and and that uh, is that ended up being the answer, right? Like, there's a lot you can do in BW with third party. Um, data um, uh, solution, well, da data that you're collecting from third-party solutions um, that you can consolidate, that you can transform and, and do all of it, all, all kinds of exciting things. So BW on HANA definitely does still exist. Um, there's a new version of it called BW4 HANA, which is, a, is like S4 HANA. It's got simplified structures. You don't have cubes, uh, info cubes anymore. Everything's done on data storage objects. So it's it's a kind of a slightly different simplified version of it. But yes, there's still place for uh, BW on HANA for that kind of thing. But if you only have BW on HANA or BW for purely operational reporting, then you know I would really evaluate the need for that. And in an S4 env environment, if you do go to S4 HANA on your ECC side, um, there is full integration with BW, with BW on HANA. The, the ETL is actually a little bit more real-time. Um, you, you can use the ETL that you currently use, but you can also enhance your ETL to be more real-time. So, yes, it's, it's, it's probably a, a longer discussion than what I could answer in just a minute. But, but yes, for sure, if, you, if you're using BW for more than just operational reporting, it still has a place, and it, and, and it, it plays very nicely with S4. Okay, let's try to squeeze in, um, let's see, maybe one more. What are the pros and cons of going from SAP ECC director, directly to s for hana against going to SUI on HANA first and then s for hana oh, Also a great qu question. Let's see if I can handle that in 30 seconds. Um, I think that, the, the, firstly, that going from, from uh, ECC to SUIT and then SUIT to S4, is, is probably the least risk because moving to, 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 to HANA, suite on HANA, um, is, is, is really just a database migration. And what you do in, in, as you migrate the database, which is really very, very low risk, you install the HANA Live layer, which is, is an SQL data set that enables you to use all of the reporting out of the, 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 the real-time, the tables that are now sitting in memory. So you are getting real-time reporting out of the system. The problem is that once you've done all that and then you go to S4 HANA, SAP's actually changed um, its, 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 its way it does reporting because the S4 HANA, HANA Live environment actually requires a, a lot of, um, it requires a lot of um, uh, security, additional security that you have to build in order to be able to access those HANA Live environments because you're reading the database directly. So with S4 HANA, they've moved to these things called core data services. Um, which is a, a different architecture for, for reporting that actually goes through the ABAP layer, so you, do, you use the security that you currently have. So you have a little bit of redundancy um, if you go sweet on HANA first um, from a reporting perspective. But I don't, it's not throw away because it's still supported, but you, 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 you're building an extra layer of security. Um, jumping to sweet on HANA, it's, it's a little riskier because, uh, sorry, to S4 HANA is a little riskier because you change, you know, a lot of, you're doing data migration, so you're doing a complete system conversion. But if you test it properly and you're, you're ready for it and you have your migration plan in place, um, you're there faster, so you're getting all the business benefits immediately and you don't have any of this redundant work. Anyway, that's as, as much as I can probably squeeze into a quick, quick answer. 
Great, great. Well, thank you very much. Unfortunately, that is all the time we have for this session. So if we didn't get to your question during this live broadcast, someone will be able to follow up with you over the next few business days. And again, uh, we want to thank you all uh, for attending today's webinar. hope you can make uh, any of the ones in the future. Uh, today's event, considering SAP S for HANA, a thorough look at what SAP's next generation ERP suite can mean for your business, hosted by SAP Insider and presented by Illumity. Shortly after this live event, we'll send you an email reminder so you can access this presentation on demand. And on behalf of our guest, Lorraine Howell, Vice President, Research and Development with Illumity, we want to thank you for your time and have a great day.